No, I got the little light over here in the back. I don't know if I can turn it back on here. You can uh, create a reflection. It would probably create a reflection yeah. in your glasses. Yeah. Give me one second. Because look, I'm in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now I can see you. Let me see. I just tried to increase the volume here on my computer. Um, Gabby went in. I think she was waiting for you to get a set. Oh, it's okay. It's linking in right now. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So we are live on Facebook as well. Um, and um, we'll be getting started in a moment. Stay tuned. Here I am preparing with my wonderful <coughs> hosts. Um, and perfect. Great. We'll be starting shortly. Uh, intercontinentalmastermind.com. Make sure to register. It's free compliment of uh, senior first class sergeant Lemuel Rodriguez and his wonderful assistant in training, <laughs> Gabby. So we'll be covering the three R's for success at any time, readiness, resources, and recovery. We'll also be streaming it on Clubhouse. Uh, make sure that um, you uh, join there as well. So here I am starting it. So I think, uh, okay, great. We'll be starting shortly, Intercontinental Mastermind with um, Senior First Class Sergeant Rodriguez, all about the three R's for success at any time, readiness, resources, and recovery. Okay, so... Audience. Okay, so I think we are we are um, live. Okay, perfect. Great. So let's give a moment for everybody to uh, get on. You are able to um, also promote it on um, on Facebook, yeah. Lemuel. Okay. Let me hear you. Let me. You're you're muted. Why are you muted? Unmute. Unmute. Perfect. You're still muted. So ask to unmute. There you are. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so I was saying, I would just say, I'm, I'm just avoiding distractions here. I'll try to put my phone in mute and everything okay. else. Yes. And then, uh, as we said, uh, yes, I update everything actually in before yesterday in Facebook in yes. regards to the difference of central time versus Pacific time yeah. and things that they need to do in order to register and the amount of emails they might take before they be able to get the Zoom link and be able to be ready to go. Beautiful. Fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. And let's see. <clears throat> So, yeah, I think it's great. Um, okay, yeah, so I had uh, several register, registrants, uh, registered people. And um, so we should have a good, um, good turnout and, and make it exciting. We'll make it exciting. We'll have room for Q&A at the end. I like how you uh, have a lot of statistics, okay? <laughs> That's really good because numbers do speak, um, speak for itself. themselves. So you definitely know are in the up and up with all these great numbers. They're not necessarily great, but with all those numbers, yeah. <laughs> so great. Um, how did it go? Um, the presentation <laughs> in Spanish is ready as well. I'm sorry, say that again. The presentation in Spanish is ready as well? Yes, actually, uh, yeah, we had it in Spanish as well. Um, we just need to probably just have it somehow presented the same way. Uh, we just uh, moved the, the actual slides, that's about it. But it's actually, it's ready to go and everything. So we do have actually a presentation in Spanish for those of Spanish speakers. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Lemuel, there is a little bit of uh, um, background sound. It sounds like, I don't know what it is. Um, are you hearing? Okay. Both my shit is muted. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Uh, 
Um, how about now? Let me let me put this down a little, the volume a little down. If you have a headset or a speakerphone like this, that will help. Okay. No, I do not have a headset. No. Yeah. It looks like a gamer, but it'll Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gabby says I, I can I can let you borrow mine, but I would look like a gamer, you know, with all this stuff. Uh, uh, and then and then uh yeah, I heard her, but will she hear? Will you be able to hear, Gabby? Yeah, actually, hold on. Yeah, because there is, it sounds like a little underwater. There is like this uh, sound. Do you hear it? Okay. Let's yeah. go and check it out. I try to think about what I have. I usually have stuff like that for me here. <clears throat> Give me one second, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hello, baby. Yeah, now it's that, that sound. Yeah, now it's 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 Ah, ok, mi amor, sí, yo te lo envío de vuelta. Ah, ok, mi amor, no hay problema, sí, yo te lo envío ahorita, ok. Ok, si no recibes de mí, lo vas a recibir de Gaby, que Gaby me va a ayudar en, en eso, en el background. Ok, mi amor, lindo. Está bien, mi amor, pues te quiero mucho, lo vio. All right, baby. Y we need to send that to Angie. Yeah, the link. Hold on. Okay, hello. Oh, great, hi. Nice. Yeah, okay, so I, the, the audio is more clear, but I'm trying to find a way so that the audio comes out of here. Yes. Uh, so that you can hear it. You gotta do it through the speakers, I guess. Okay, hold on. Um, could you talk real quick? Yes. Uh, We're testing. Okay, hold on. Um, the audio is not working with her. And the mastermind.com, and today's special co-host is First Class Senior Sergeant Lemuel Rodriguez with his wonderful assistant in training, Miss Gabby, who is testing the audio. We are going to be covering the three- you the test speaker, you should come out of here, you have to speak. It's not gonna work. For success at any time. Hold on. Readiness, resources, and recovery. In that exact order. <laughs> no, she didn't hear it. It's working. Oh, hold on. Hello, Dr. Pizzini. Uh, could you speak for us real quick? Yes. Okay. So we are live on Zoom. Uh, you're on mute, by the way, Dr. Pizzini. I'm on mute. Uh, yeah, she's on mute. You can tell. I'm not on mute. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, the sound is back. The sound. Do you hear it? Do you guys hear it? Hello, I mean, it's, hello, it's not the end of the world, but it, it is uh, a little distracting. Yeah,
I play some music. Hi, Annie, welcome. Happy you make it. <laughs> right on time. Good job. We got some Canadian uh, representation. Very nice. And here is uh, Dr. Burroughs. We have some Switzerland and American representation. Welcome, Dr. Burroughs. Well, thank you, Dr. Elena. <laughs> You're welcome. And um, now we have um, Down Under Australia joining us. Looking good, looking good, Annie. And Michael, welcome. We'll be starting momentarily. Great. So I think the sound is, uh, is good, Lemuel. Do you want to test it? You want to say something? Ah, we can hear you. We see your, we see your lips moving. But... Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Hi, no, you're not late. Hi, Michael. Welcome. How are you doing? Really well, actually. Quite motivated, inspired already. Nice. Fabulous. Good. It's going to be you next month. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Same here. Same here. Yes. Yeah, so while we're waiting for everybody to join, um, next month, Michael will be the co-host and we'll be talking about universal forces and principles and how uh, numerology has uh, in history as um, somewhat um, correlated to, to the events that are, um, that are happening in our lifetime. So uh, more to come on that. And welcome Veron from London. So how's, uh, how's the audio, Lemuel? Uh, go ahead and try and test it. Lemuel, say something. Okay. We can hear you. And I made Lemuel uh, change the sound because um, it had a little bit of static, but if needed, We'll go back to wh what it was. It's better to have some static than no sound at all. <laughs> or maybe Gabby, maybe you can speak through your sound if you unmute from your own um, computer. Looking good, looking good, Dr. Burroughs. Very nice. Hi, Gary. Where are you connecting from today with that beautiful nice. background? Hey, guys. Uh, the background is Budapest. Nice. I'm in Melbourne. <laughs> Fantastic. Great, great. All right. We'll give it one more moment, then we have to start. Lemuel, how are you doing? Okay. Then, um, then... Uh, you just go back to the old mic, because this one, we can't hear you. Uh, Gabby, can you unmute so at least we can hear from you? Welcome, uh, Gillian from New York City. Oh, yes. Hi. We got the Big Apple representation. And um, if you guys can, uh, please do share your beautiful video so we can see your beautiful and handsome faces. Um, Okay, so I turn my volume up. Okay. Still can hear you, Lemuel. We see your we see your lips moving, but no sound. <laughs> so what the heck? Okay, we'll we'll give it a moment. Um oh, my volume. <laughs> well, Jillian is oh, ah, what happened? You got it. You got it with your tower garden in the background. <laughs> Looks a little bare. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Here's Popette from California. So Lemuel, it shows like right now you have no sound, even the microphone is gone, okay? The microphone it's, is... It's not, just a mute, it's not just a mute thing, is it? You've got the mute settings. Ah, now, now it came back. Okay, try speaking. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, you can always call in with the phone number. Hey, there we go. Now I hear you. So, um... Okay, I need to communicate with you guys. Gabby, can you unmute? Oh, I have to Hello? Okay. okay. Um, Lemuel, speak. Okay. 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 Lemuel, speak. Yes, I can hear it now. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. So um, today we are having a very special episode of this Intercontinental Mastermind because um, my co-host of the most is a first class senior sergeant, Lemuel Rodriguez, and his wonderful daughter, Gabby. So he volunteered to do this uh, mastermind for us in light of everything that has happened in the last year to really empower us with the three R's. How many? Three R's. Three, exactly. For success. <clears throat> at any time, and here they are in this exact order. Readiness, resources, and recovery. Because Senior Sergeant Lemuel Rodriguez has been going through so much training, I'll have him introduce himself so that um, I don't miss anything. And welcome Senior Sergeant Lemuel Rodriguez. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Pezzini. Thank you, and um, um, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, or everything. Which zone you actually had established right now? Um, please, uh, I just want to be honest with you. This is my very first time doing a conference via Zoom, so uh, just be please don't mind if I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I've been doing many conferences, but not in person, and in many ways, but not via Zoom. So this is my first one. Just to be honest. Um, but actually, I'm very take this opportunity very quick to say thank you to um, the Dr. Pezzini for giving us the opportunity, not only to me, but also to my daughter, Gabby, uh, to expose this actually a couple of things that we have, many things that we actually have to, to uh, we can take advantage and help out to each other. And also you can actually enjoy and at the same time learn something. And as well, also very thank you very much for uh, Maria Maris, which is actually my wife, she won't be able to be here present due to work, but she actually very helpful and extra to support me in this in this uh, tenure that we actually about to to do, and actually in, the, in getting into different ways and businesses that actually she's actually involved as well. Uh, with no further ado, we're going to start the presentation, which is a disaster wow. in our time. Um, um, Doctor, a very quick uh, the slide before that one. Go ahead, the, the next one. Here you go. Who's actually uh, Sergeant First Class Rodriguez, which is me. Uh, actually, I put Rob for the first three letters uh, from Rodriguez. And actually, two days, I've actually, I, I work as an active duty in the military. I've been actually working for 23 years. Um, I would explain to you ladies on what is CERT. I actually do CERT, which is Community Emergency Response Teams. This is actually a totally volunteer team. And um, I will get to you later, explain to you how they actually work and in which way you actually can be part of it if you want to. Uh, be as part of the instructor and volunteer as well. I uh, work in the health systems, operations, intelligence, and planning, not only in general, but also for the military. And Sorry, sorry. I am muted um, accidentally. Gabby. Turned not, off. I'm actually part of that. Okay. Um, and, and we're going to be talking also eventually as we do this uh, presentation, we're going to be talking also about the creation of the PACE program which is very good uh, for everybody, including for groups as well as the individuals that actually was created here and based on the International Pace Academy. That's actually one of uh, the, uh, the creator uh, in combination and in conjunction with the Gabby and as well with my wife, Ms. Maris. And part of it also the Expedition Consulting. 
Uh, without further ado, I'm also going to give uh, the bat on very quick to my daughter, Gabby, so she can actually present herself here very quick. Hello, uh, my name is Gabby, and I am the marketing strategist at Pace Academy. And I am basically here so that I'm in charge of the social media. I created the website myself, um, just anything of the sort. Uh, I'm currently in college, uh, if you can't tell by my voice. <laughs> now we want to see uh, your beautiful yes. face as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I will be graduating with my associates this June and then transferring to a four year afterward. But in the process now, I've been doing marketing for Pace. Right. I think. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So there is a little bit of echo, but we'll manage. And mm -hmm. um, so, so the, the, the word disasters, of course, is not a very sexy word and, or appealing. And people don't like to, um, don't take the time to prevent, but uh, today we'll talk about how a little bit of organization and preparation can really go a long way and not only save your life, the life of your loved ones, including your pets. So what do we mean uh, by um, disaster, uh, Gabby and um, <coughs> Rodriguez? Yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you for the opportunity, Doctor, again. Uh, as we go and we grow, um, we just need to be about a couple of things that we never get a chance to learn or experience as we go through life. And this actually can change our lives forever, believe it or not. Uh, in many ways, shapes, or forms that you can even imagine. And, and many people, some things they have to learn the hard way because they never get a chance to live with those or because it depends on where you are and where you're from. You know, sometimes we live in different places that we grew up and we never had any chance to experience anything at all or as well as we never get taught or teach us, somebody to teach us in case something happens, what do we need to do? And those are things that we're going to start looking into it. One of the things is, for example, major catastrophe is the first thing that might hit you. And one of the things that you go and experience, believe it or not, as a human, as we all humans, it's going to be anxiety, shock, uh, fear, especially nowadays when we have, uh, especially not to put it as an example, but I have to, um, when you go and get your kids to school, all of a sudden something happens and then, okay, you're separated from your kids. How can I get in touch with my kids? How can I get, how, how can I get it? able to go and rescue them or, or take care of them or who can take care of them. So the, and this is only one small example of many things can happen in the travel and in, in, in which ways we need to go and then what things we can do to mitigate this type of uh, what we call it issues for visible disasters or, or things that we can encounter as, as persons, as humans, and also many other things that we can actually have to deal with it. Let's put it that way. Thank you. And what would be an example of that, like that disaster, like an earthquake, something? <clears throat> well, that's one of the things, uh, thank you for asking that. One of the things that we're going to be in, encountering, which is what we're going to be discussing here coming up, is about the different disasters. And believe it or not, you'll be uh, very amazed in how many disasters we actually are dealing with what people are unaware of in the, in the daily basis, believe it or not. But uh, as, a, as a little note, statistically 25 million people have affected by natural disasters in the last 20 years. And as we go through and the time frame keep going and we get better and more actually more technically proficient, but also technically uh, in, uh, futuristic ways, and we progress as humans, but also we even encounter more all the challenges that we sometimes we were unaware of. And now we have to come up with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that being said, uh, I'm going to show you this is one of the one of the type of different disasters. We're dealing with floods, tornadoes, hurricanes. Most likely what we used to hear is tornadoes, hurricanes, severe thunderstorms. One of the big examples, but it was the big uh, winter storm that we just had in Texas. What happened? That winter storm, it didn't happen since maybe 1890s. So think about it, like almost over 100 years. And I said, just, just happened again. And cut a lot of people uh, unprepared. And to the point that it was people, believe it or not, going to the rivers close by to get water and even start cutting woods from their trees in the backyard to have wood to, to get uh, some kind of heat. It went to that way, believe it or not. 
I mean, and it was people that it was without even electricity for the past, for at least two weeks or more. And that's one of the things that we're gonna discuss here. You see earthquakes, cold weather, man-made, so because we do actually have man-made wildfires. Um, next slide, doctora. Terrorism, you know, with you believe it or not, that's a reality. People that do bad things for bad intentions, for bad reasons. Bioterrorism and pandemics. And you know what we mean by this, the COVID-19. This is very good. This is one of the big ones. Uh, nuclear disasters, civil unrest that we actually, we have been living in the past few months, civil unrest. Even though you go to a different stage, you see people protesting, different, doing different things. That actually is a civil unrest. Okay, that it can create many things, especially for the businesses or in your neighborhood, and then it creates something that now you're not aware, and now you have to prepare, and you don't have the resources. Economic collapse, okay? And then you have the other one, we call CME and EMP coronal mass ejections. This is pretty much the so-called solar flares that a lot of people talk about, the conspiracy theories on it. But believe it or not, it's like the solar, the sun itself, it creates and have these solar flares that irradiates and create imbalance in planet Earth and tsunamis. Remember that big tsunami that happens even in Japan a couple of years ago in towards the nuclear plant? Now it doesn't create a tsunami, what else it created? It created an, an instability in the nuclear plant. And now we have to deal with all bunch of different things. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a couple of things that we need to do. To prepare. Um, so, so it's not that difficult to prepare, but again, five minutes of preparations can, can save you five, 50 years of life and the life of your loved ones. So, uh, so that you know, Lemuel, we do have uh, almost every continent representation here and nobody is immune, no matter where you live. Even in Las Vegas, we thought that um, we are immune but just in three years of lived here, we have had some gun shooting, we've had earthquakes, <laughs> they never happen. And so it, anything can happen. We have Asia, we have Australia here, we have Europe, Americas, we don't have Africa today, but, um, but you know, really this can happen anywhere. Is that correct, Lemuel? Do we have any statistics about certain countries more affected than others or is it, is it pretty much congruent everywhere in terms of numbers? It's, it's pretty much congruent anywhere. And the reason being that I can say that, but this is just my personal opinion, is because remember, disasters never tells you when it's gonna happen and how it's gonna happen. And if you see, you know, very typical, like in the Pacific area, what happened? Tsunamis is the most typical one. In the Caribbean, hurricanes. Uh, but that doesn't exist that it can be all of a sudden a, a, a severe thunderstorms and then it create a flooding. And then you have the combination of those two things. Not only, no, and then in the meantime, a hurricane is approaching. So now, now you have to deal with three things. So it's many ways, shape and forms, it can happen. Now, yes, in certain areas, it's most common to have certain things versus others. In very some other areas, it can have flooding versus probably uh, the hurricane stuff. But nobody sense. Like, for example, even on this past week, we have a... Oh, sorry, sorry. My fault. Yeah. I'm you. The count is in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Out of the blue in the, in like, uh, in the afternoon. Actually, two days ago, the wind, it just changed. And from very sunny, it, for about 30 minutes, it was actually um, thunderstorm and hail dropping in San Antonio, Texas, two days ago. So it, it, many things, it's things that can happen and change everything in, in where you at, okay? Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I would like to talk about is actually this over here, which is the, the law of the three states. This is something that you, a couple of things to start giving you aware of the things that you can do. Now, usually human beings cannot live without blood and auction without more than three minutes. That's probably it was created. Remember the so-called uh, CPR that people resuscitate? But if you have more than three minutes, most likely what happens, your brain start malfunctioning. And that's why you ended up being, don't be the same person after that. Uh, you cannot live without maintaining your body temperature for more than three hours. That's another thing. That's why you became like hypothermic. That means you get extreme cold weather or hyperthermic, which is extreme hot weather. And you cannot live without water without three days. And obviously without food without three days as well. And you cannot live with human assistance, you know, without, without three months. 
Now, more and more people are getting more remotely, you know, giving off the grid, what they call it off the grid. You've probably heard that now a lot. But believe me, they actually tons of time and months in preparing only to do that. But even with that, you have they always have a close neighbor, at least even two miles away, or at least three or 10 kilometers away, they will have somebody. But yes, that's happening. Thank you. How do we prepare, actually? Uh, now, this is the main things that I'm going to see. We're going to be talking about 10 ways and how we can prepare. One of the things you're going to prepare is going to be food, uh, fuel and power source, first aid and medicine, shelter and protection, water. And with that, actually, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about each one of them because it's going to be it's going to be a little topics here and there be in regards to that. Uh, can we go to the next slide, man? Uh, this is the other ones to finish, which is self defense. Emergency cash, neighborhood plan, disaster planning, maintenance and protection. Okay. What's the neighborhood clan? That sounds. Yes, I know it sounds like a clan, but it's not the right, it's, it's not the wrong word. Okay, neighborhood clan actually is, it could be like the third community emergency response team. That means within your neighborhood, you get together and guess what? You know your neighborhood. Well, guess what? Your neighborhood is probably a, a carpenter. Oh, guess what? Well, it's good. Hey, can we talk? And then we start having what, relations with a carpenter. Your next neighbor probably could be a doctor. So now you can get together. And now, guess what? You have resources that, hey, guess what? If something gets hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. The person that is probably the carpenter might help to create some kind of protection for your house. And what you and then what your specialty are, like, guess what? I can probably help you with uh, probably the, the, for example, the self-defense. So guess what? I can help you and provide you security. And now you all just start getting together in the neighborhood and establish that kind of plan and cohesion to be better and help self-protection within yourselves when the disaster happened. That's what it means. Okay. okay? Thank you for explaining. Um, so ways, ways, to be, ways to be preparing in regard is actually be prepared. Planning is everything. That's one of the biggest things that we need to be aware of. And practice, practice, practice. Okay. Let me talk to you about a couple of the things that we already discussed, okay, um, before we continue. Um, Doctor, can we go to the slide that says uh, that it will start the 10 ways, the food? The next one. Here you go. Okay, food. What is important food? Because as we said, not many people can live without food for three days, okay? Fuel and power search. Now, when I'm saying all these topics, because this is what happened. We get the food, we get the fuel. We probably have somebody that can teach us even do medicine, first aid kit, but shelter and protection of water. But what happened? We need to understand that besides this, we have to pay attention to little details. What happened to food? Okay, but what kind of food? Do I have a food that will last me a couple of months, a couple of years, so I can prepare myself to it? Okay, and also if as we use it, we look for expiration day. Okay, it, it will be good after expiration day. Those are little things that you can need to be aware of. And most likely, yeah, it could be good. You just have to pay attention to certain little details. Fuel power, guess what? I can get myself a generator. But then guess what? I, I, I went there and when I'm about to use it, I don't even know how to turn on the generator. So you need to practice, practice and practice. What kind of generator do I have? Does it going to help me? How do I if I put the wrong fuel? And now it's a brand new generator, but I cannot use it because I have the wrong fuel. You know, first day, do I have what I actually needed for me? With this, actually, do I have people, a person that is live with me, they have free conditions, they need their medications. Okay, I have to think about that. Okay, do I have to get medications that they might need in case an emergency happens and then we cannot go anywhere? Okay, do I have enough medications to take care of myself and my family member that you might need, need that medication in case something happens? Those are the things you need to be aware of. If you run out of power and you have somebody who's diabetic, how can I keep cool and maintain their injections without getting bad and then they could be into a blood sugar, you know, catastrophe, not saying that way, but it could happen. So those are little things that you need to be little by little prepared and start practicing so you get better. The water, do I need to get better in a, get a source of water? Yes. Is the water, as soon as you have an emergency in your house and then you have water, is that water safe? We don't know because a lot of these plants, like the winter storm in Texas, the plants shut down. So you got water, but guess what? That water they were, they were drinking there, 
It was not going to the filtering system. So it was have bacteria and everything else, believe it or not, because they didn't have electricity enough to put the turbines to clean the system. But you did have water in Texas, but the water was not safe. You see what I'm saying? So those are little things that we need to start paying attention. A little by little, and I can explain that later. And, uh, after the call, you guys want to welcome, we can do that. We just have to concentrate in the, in the and yeah. hearing what we're doing right now. Um, so that uh, to put everything into perspective, I don't know if you can say this, uh, Sergeant Lemuel, at this rate, when is the next disaster more likely to happen at this rate uh, in, um, you know, you think <coughs> range, are we talking about? Well, very, well that's, a, that's a very good question. I'll tell you this, is it, because this is what happened. We're so concentrating in what we do daily, in our daily lives and everything else, that we don't sometimes we don't pay attention. We don't pay, uh, what do you call that? Um, be oh. aware about surrounding and what is going on in the environment. And also to the other things and agencies that actually can help you with, but we don't, we just don't pay attention to it because we just, I gotta go to work. I have to cook for the kids. I have to do this, I have to do that. But we never pay attention to little things. Now, the upcoming season, believe it or not, right now is hurricanes. That's what it is right now. It's about to start happening is hurricanes. Okay, with that being said also, is the area that you live. And it's very simple. You can do some research and say, okay, in the area that I live, where is most likely where I'm up, uh, vulnerable? That means, okay, that I live that is in an area that is actually uh, vulnerable for flooding or for example, uh, tornadoes. So that means I live in an area that tornadoes most likely is gonna happen. That is the type of emergency I need to be aware of and what in which way I can prepare. Because it can happen. Actually, like today in Sunday, uh, we have a we have a, an extreme storm with tornadoes in in Alabama, Georgia. It just happened, and actually, it was uh, some flooding that happened, uh, and you will see that in the news. Actually, from yesterday or today, they'll continue doing about flooding. So those are things that if you actually start with where you live, if where you live is in what kind of area that you live, and what is most likely what's going to happen in the area that, that you live. Most likely that's what it is. But in general, they put the agencies put out what is can happen and in which way it could happen. Okay. Now, in order to prepare, in order to prepare also, I've 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 worked it, I played this out here, which is a couple of things, but you hear this a lot. Especially you can go to YouTube, forget it, you'll be there forever. <laughs> not to not to sponsor YouTube. I just tell you that you go to YouTube, you can see tons of those things about EDC which is everyday carry kit. This is kits that you prepare yourself, but you can see a lot of people that prep these kits for themselves in, to go to work every day. And then in case something happens, they have this to help themselves to in case they need to disengage any emergency or in case they need to make it ha to home. Somehow they will make it home by using this everyday kit that they carry just in case something happens. Okay. I've seen them even at Walmart. This, this yes, thing. you can have that in Walmart. And let me tell you, um, um, based on that, and we can work this in many ways, you can even have, you can even go to, like you're saying, a simple store and you don't have to go and buy anything expensive at all, believe me. And that's why I'm also I'm here talking about this. You can go and do very simple things and in a very good reasonable price for you and, and you can and you can survive and you can make it no problem. It's just about which, what are you taking and what you're using? But more than ever, how to use it. What did I need to know and how to use it? Because it doesn't do any good for me to have that kid in my home. And then when the emergency happens, I'm just going to open it. And now I'm going to start learning how to use it. It's a little late. Okay? You need to start using it and learning. So when the emergency happens, I already have an idea. We can set it up and we can be ready to go. Okay. okay, and here's a provocative question because we like those. <laughs> Why isn't the government, quote unquote, um, teaching us or making this training mandatory? Well, I'm telling you, um, it, it, this is a catch to two questions. Now, remember, I work for the government, so I cannot exactly. compromise with <laughs> there. All right, so let me put it out there for everybody. But <clears throat> It's different ways you can do this. And yes, you can actually study. The government actually offered this for free. These classes, they offer classes for free. The CERT, the Community Emergency Response Team, is classes that can teach you 
how to evacuate a patient, how to treat people, how to actually run and walk through uh, a disaster, and how to treat certain people, everything. And that training is free by the government, believe it or not. It's just out there. We just haven't got a chance to probably look at it. But I can help you. And, and, and I got this in the presentation, where you need to go yeah. in, in order to get prepared. So actually, I did prepare myself in that manner. So it's actually this presentation. I will show you that. Sure. Okay. But they are there. And also remember, we're dealing with two things. You're talking about the government, but now which government are you talking? You're talking about the federal government or you're talking about the state side government, okay? Because remember, the government can give you guidance to the state, but it ultimately sometimes it's up to the state to decide in how they're going to do this, in which way they're going to decide to manage the emergency. And then if they need extra help, then they will probably go up and say, request the help to the federal government. Can you please help us out because... We cannot manage this anymore, for example. Or we are to the top of our limits and resources. Can you please assist us? Did that answer the question? Yes, very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. also, with that being said, before we continue in this part of the planning, we have other things. We have the, uh, if you can go before that, ma'am, uh, Doctora, which is the, keep going, that one there. We have the main disaster kit and we have the vehicle survivor kit. I decided to put this ones and also the bug out bags. Many people does that. You know, they have a bug out bag, which is, which is, remember, this is actually from the government recommended for free. Um, then they tell you, and actually they give you a list of all the things that you should have in a bag to sustain you for 72 hours. Now, my personal opinion, and that's just me, do they really 72 hours, three days help? I will say no. Any disaster that happened around, even the winter storm that we have in Texas, how many days were there? It was at least a week, seven to 10 days is the standard. So if I was you, I mean, you have a bag. Yeah, the, the intention with this bag is for you to evacuate, to leave your house or whatever it is, to go to a place that they can take care of you and you'll be able to survive through three days until the, somehow the government will continue helping you and assisting you. But in my case, I will recommend you. You have something else, I will suggest you that. Okay, main disaster kit is for the house. You're going to stay at home, have something set up so it can help you and sustain yourself for a while. And actually, wherever you go, for example, you go for a long trip, have something that will help you out. In the meantime, in case you're having an accident or an emergency, or you get stuck because it happens. On my way, I go to Texas, and all of a sudden, I have a tornado in Oklahoma. Guess what? I have to go underneath the bridge, and now I have to stay there for 24 hours. Guess what? At least I have something in my vehicle to help me and maintain and sustain myself for 24 hours before I can continue. So that's a little a couple of examples I can give in there. Okay? Great. Thank you. All right, very good. All right, planning. Okay, we, we need to put together a plan, and that's what I was telling you about. Emergency alert and warnings, shelter, family household communication, emergency preparedness kits, and CDC. Let me explain this very quick. This is for you as a person, as an individual, to put a plan together. Sit down in the table with your family and say, okay, if something happens, how are we gonna communicate? Okay, if the kids are at school, how we do that? Guess what, you can get as simple as sticky, with a Sharpie and get a route. And guess what? If you're here and you're alive, you can put, guess what? Take that Sharpie, which is a, a permanent market and uh, go to your neighbor, for example, hey, go to the closest neighbor mailbox and write your name. And when I go through there, if I see your name, that means you're still alive and we I just try to make it home. You know, little things like that. Okay, now this is trade or the tricks of the trade that it, it takes more explanation, but I cannot do it here now. Uh, shelter, I mean, do we have something fixed and good that we can stay? Or if we're in the middle of nowhere, do we have something that we can work on? Family household communication, how can we communicate? We have the cell phones, okay? But besides the cell phones, what else do you have? Do I have to send you a letter? You know, it won't be able to. I mean, it, it, communication will be, it takes forever, especially in the mailbox. How, what else, all the things, or actually what other applications that you can actually download in your phone that maybe don't even cost you anything that you can use in order to communicate with family? That could be existing. Yes, that can happen. If there's uh, the reception and electricity. <laughs> and now another thing with that is what? The reception and electricity. What is the first thing that goes down? Usually is cell phone towers. Now, how can I communicate with my, with my family members? You see? That's why you have to create a system. You need to sit down together and create actually, which eventually we're going to talk about the International Space Academy, is a face plan. How are we going to do this? Okay? Emergency preparedness kit. And this is what I was telling you. 
took and when you target this, okay, what family members do I have that need they need extra care? And this is including also pets and people with disabilities. Okay, this is very important. And the CDC have communications with the CDC because CDC put the latest and greatest guidance on what is happening and which way and resources that you can use to help yourself out. Okay, next please. Okay, it consider, consider specific needs in your household. And that's what I was telling you about people with disabilities, people that might need uh, a, a wheelchair, people that probably have uh, special needs, okay? And create that family emergency plan, pet consideration, and you can create a plan for your pet, believe it or not, and actually have contacts like, okay, where is, where is the closest veterinary clinic that I can bring my pet in case something happens? Or they're available for you when you need them. And you can create an emergency kit for them. What you can do in emergency for your pet as well. And know what type of emergency is very important. Do the type of emergency that I need that is happening in my house, is it really need to call the 911? Do I need to call the federal agency? Maybe not. If you have a twisting ankle, I understand it's an emergency. Somebody cannot walk. But guess what? That might not even consider emergency in the bigger picture for the bigger emergencies happening all around your neighborhood for the CDC or for FEMA or for the other agencies, okay? That's the things you need to have taken into consideration. Thank you. Um, STOPA, this is very quick. This is an acronym that it was created uh, by, by a guy named Dan. Very good, actually. I like it. This is, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you go home or whatever it is and you have an emergency, these are things you get. Sit down, stop, and start thinking what you need to do. Okay, observe your surroundings to see because believe it or not, it's hazmat. It's very harsh things that can happen. Make a plan and actually stay alive. Okay, those are many of the main things is uh, what they call the acronym STOPA. Next, please. So we will provide the uh, PowerPoint um, so you don't need to take To everybody, it. yes. Yeah. And we're going to be available after this if you guys need them. This is just an example of our prepare for a, a getting emergency supply kit. And it tells you this is, and this actually I downloaded from the resources that I have there towards the end of the presentation. You guys can get in and get it. Too easy, which is, I think it's ready.gov. And also you can go to FEMA, FEMA.gov as well and get this. These uh, this actually brochures and actually information. Actually, you can even download uh, check list, check sheet list, list that you can utilize for yourself and your family to establish your family care plan and your emergency plan, believe it or not. They have that. And they only don't have this in English. They also have it in Spanish if you need to do it in Spanish. Okay, mm -hmm. by the way. Okay, yes. And uh, I, next one, please. Many people have pets, so. <laughs> yes, and we can work that out. So great. So this is a great starting point because they need to have their own survival kit. Yes, and they actually they do have. I do have the the a couple of the websites that you can go and get emergency kits for pets. Okay. All okay. Right. Now, one of the basic thing is recovering after disaster. Now, why this presentation is because believe it or not, is made about how we study disasters, and mainly the main thing is you actually you need to start giving in disasters preparedness. And after that, you create a emergency plan. And after you have an emergency plan, you create mitigation. When you create mitigation, that means in ways that you're going to try to avoid the emergency get any worse. Mitigation means that things that you need to work on and try to avoid uh, things that you can actually um, put in danger your family or your household per se. And then eventually after all that, you create a recovery. And this is actually including a recovery plan, okay? And after recovery that you have, for example, this emergency that happens in Texas in the winter. After all that, this is a couple of things that people should be no, doing, which is contact emergency, is contact your emergency statehood. That means in within your state, for example, the state of Texas, took the emergency services of Texas and they can give you guidance and they might probably guide you where you, you need to go to be take, to going to take care of you in a better way, shape or form. Okay, besides that, that's why it's very important for you in the emergency plan to have all your contacts, for example, for your home insurance, life insurance, believe it or not, car insurance. So you can, in case something happens to all of these things, you can start contacting your insurance or your agent. Hey, I have this emergency. Most likely they're already aware of, and they probably, what they do, they actually do teams, and those teams go to the area of the disaster to take care of those people that they need to take, be taken care of, okay? Safety, make sure for your own safety and everything else and go from there. Okay, 
As they recover the disaster, this is what I put over here, is the FEMA.gov. You go to FEMA.gov, it give you plenty of information in many things that you can go and take care. They will give you actually the classes that you can take online for yourself. And actually as part of eventually you want to become part of the CERT team, if you want to, which is the Community Emergency Response Team program that they have in, in the many communities, volunteering. And let me, let me be clarifying this. It doesn't matter what age, how old, or how young you are. The CERT program is there for you. And what I'm saying by this is that they will be there. And if, for example, you cannot um, help lifting heavy stuff, it's okay. They will prepare you and give you the training, but also they be aware that when you're helping out, they will put you in a duty or do something that you can help be utilized uh, in the best way possible without getting yourself hurt or in any danger possible, okay? And the same way they do have programs for the young adults and also for kids in high school that have CERT programs that they can do that so they can prepare them to be a better citizens in any way, shape or form as well. So this is something that you can be there is no on no things to no strings attached. They help you, they teach you, they certify you, and you can actually help the community in the best way you can. No issues, no about anything of you can or you cannot do your job. Okay. I just mm -hmm. want to clarify that so you'll be good to go. Thank um, you. They have actually these actually um, the state and local resources, very good also. You can go to, for example, uh, based on your local, like if you live in Nevada, go Nevada EMS system. And they will probably give you everything that you might need to know and the resources they have for you as a resident of Nevada in, in order to help you out, even give you probably things that you might need. And they actually have it there for you. And you'll and be, you be surprised all the help that they can distribute and, and give you to you and resources, and you don't even know about it, that we're not even aware about it. Sergeant, 50% okay. uh, of our audience here today is uh, from uh, outside the US. Are these resources? Good for them as well? Yes. Do you actually believe it or not that um, they, within where they live, they should have uh, the government itself or the state or whatever you live, or the county that they live or the town, they should have their, their emergency services. And those emergency services, technically, what they do, they have uh, an standard operation procedure, what they call it SOP in the military, which is, is the plans of, in case something happens in that town, how they're going to manage the emergency. And as they need more help, they actually gonna start getting the help they need. And mostly likely, believe it or not, and let me tell you now, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get into the little weeds, okay? In a little more professional way, is they have MOUs and MOAs. That is memorandums of understanding, memorandums of, of acknowledgement. That means they have memorandums of agreements with the next county, with the next town. And example, for example, okay, my town, let's put this down. For example, I live in Italia, in Italy. But my town, it have emergency system for medical, but they don't have, uh, they don't have, for example, uh, enough police force. Okay, no problem. The next town, it has that. So guess what? When the emergency happens, the town it will call the neighborhood, and the neighborhood is going to start providing police and security for them to help them out to mitigate the problem. And now everybody start working better and help out each other. And the same way it's going to happen to the other town when the other town have an emergency because they have disagreements. So it's not only as a town and neighborhood, but also as a whole for the state and for the country, they start doing that. Now, not everybody works the same way, but you can do that in the towns that you can live. Yes, absolutely, you should have a plan for that. Okay, great, great. Thank you so much. Okay, if you don't have any, uh, any other, this, I'm gonna stop here very quick. I'm gonna let Gabby now okay. take over and talking about the International Pace Academy which is one of the things that we do here to help out. And some of the, things that of the positive news, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, go ahead, Gabby. Oh, we'll, we'll switch. Give me a second. Yeah. Ooh, okay, hello. <laughs> um, all right, so all of you met me earlier, so hello. I'm here to talk about the International Pace Academy. Um, as you can see on your screen, we have the mission and the vision about our program, which is the pacing yourself in life. And our mission is basically to provide clarity of where we're heading during this lifetime, you know, because there's just a lot of things that we don't think about when we're trying to, you know, get to our goals. So, 
and the vision for our, our company is basically to contribute the life of our community members so that they can live something that is more meaningful and productive and valuable. You know, we want people to succeed and be able to get a future. And that's very much like the disaster preparedness that we're talking about. We want to be able to do things that are going to help us in the future that prepare us for the things that we're not really thinking about or seeing right now in the moment. Um, so as you can see on your screen are the programs that we offer at our at our establishment and they are the pace pace values and pace proactive now each of these have differing uh, levels of how much they offer. So the pace is our basic program so that's basically where we talk about the different things that you would need to be prepared for an emergency. Uh, and as you go on, we level up the programs to better fit a more professional lifestyle as well as a more successful personal lifestyle. So that is something that we've been working on. And as you see, we have our website, the internationalpaceacademy.com. Um, that is what I created. Uh, I'm the marketing strategist, so <laughs> that was kind of my job. <laughs> and they were just like, go, go do that. And I was like, okay, I got that. I'll do the, the graphics and everything. Um, and our email is there. It's 18, okay. And uh, amazing, very professional. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Okay. Oh, sorry. Well, 19, but yes, close. <laughs> um, but yes, as you see, our email is there. So if you guys ever have any questions about the programs that we offer and everything, we would love to hear it. Um, and if you guys would actually like to send us feedback about how this presentation went, you can uh, email us at that email. We will check it and, you know, talk about how it's going. Also, our phone number was on there. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, if you want to call this, that would be cool. <laughs> uh, so here is the slide for any questions about disaster preparedness, any questions about um, International Pace Academy, anything of the sort. Yes, so. very good. Thank you so much, Gabby. While uh, people gather their questions, mm -hmm. that type them, type them into the chat box so they can copy and paste. So uh, let's take some questions. We did our best to cover the basics and actually hopefully gave you gave you hope for the future even if i'm sure each one of you throughout this lifetime has experienced some sort of disaster uh, there is hope uh, there is always hope if uh, if if you plan strategically and you are prepared so hopefully uh, you see the glass half full versus half empty okay with this presentation and uh, we want to hear from you what stuck for you if these um if you have any question, if this information is motivating you to do something, and if so, what what is that, and uh, and what what would that be? Feel free to gather your question, unmute, or ask in the chat box. And as uh, Sergeant Rodriguez, did, did, were you putting together some um, kit meal kits, or uh, remind me, or they can get it somewhere? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Were you put preparing some meal food kits? Oh yes, absolutely. You can you can prepare food kits. Okay, now it's many ways. Believe it or not, nowadays they have a let me call it that the so called uh, preppers. You know, they have people that actually that this this type of uh, people actually um, uh, not to be degrading them, but actually they're very good. They actually have a lot of oh. that's what they do. They actually prep for everything, for any type of disasters that you can think of. I mean, they can go to the extremes, believe it or not, which is okay, but that's what they like to do. Okay, but they actually exist on many foods, but there are simple foods that you can get in the supermarket and you can create a package of food. Um, you know, the military have been using for years, the MREs, which stands for meals ready to eat. And usually they last for many years, um, but you can actually set yourself uh, for, for very simple things. That you can actually get in the mark in the supermarket, even protein with food, uh, with chicken, beef, everything and things. Um, believe it or not, the, when I was doing research, believe it or not, I found, um, believe it or not, like you know the cans. I bought uh, a, a can of bread, a bread that comes in a can that you can even buy and have it as a, as as a as, as a reliable source for eating, and it's bread, but it actually comes in a can completely sealed. 
So yeah, you can prep some foods in a certain way. The only thing you have to think is prep, okay, what do I deal with? Okay, it's only me or it's only me and my pets. It's only me and uh, people with disabilities that cannot eat that certain kind of food. So you see, now we're going into certain details that you have to pay attention to it. And then in which way I can do it. Uh, one point I, I, I even brought up very quick, if you don't mind, is uh, last time I said, listen, if you even buy even one, one, um, one can of soup once a month for 12 months, that's a 12 can of soup. And then something happens, you have soup at least for 12, for at least, you know, if you divide it at least three times a day, you know, for, for four weeks. But what I'm saying is, you know what I mean? And then as the expiration date comes in, you just, uh, you go to the store, guess what? You just use the old one and get, put the new one in the back for in case of emergency. You know, but, but now this takes a little, you know, it's like every single project. It takes a while when you start it, but once you start it and you have continuity, it's simple to maintain. And then you can utilize this any way you can. But those are things you have to be aware of, okay? Especially what in consideration. Perfect. Yes. So we have a couple comments from the chat. The first one is from a Dr. Katrina. And they say, thank you, oops, sorry. Thank you for this presentation. It made me aware that I'm not prepared for any physical crisis. Since COVID, I stock water and some food, but nothing for a medical emergency. And we wanna say thank you for, for addressing that and saying that in the, in the chat, because that's really important for us to know as well, that there's other people out there that have no clue, like even where to start. So just, just starting with something like <coughs> stocking water or just going to the store and buying one can of soup every single day. Well, not every day, but like every month, like it'll prepare you more than you already know. Cause you never know when an, uh, when an accident is going to happen. So that's really meaningful to hear from, from you. And, yeah, and by the way, like I said, did he, did he any further guidance? Remember the, you can, uh, not to say like this, not take advantage of it, but uh, you can always call us and give me, uh, because that's my specialty actually in the, in the military. Actually, I'm a medic. I'm a combat medic, and actually I deal with, uh, I work directly up in, in higher levels, uh, actually, with the military. So actually, that's what I do. I work actually dealing with all these, actually, type of emergency, and I can give you further guidance in things that you might need uh, in regards of um, supplies and everything else that you can get, even in, at a good, reasonable price. Even in Walmart, you can get something very nice, and it's reliable, and, it's, and it could work. Yes, we have another question. Uh, this is from Annie. She says, thank you for this awesome presentation. Or they say, I apologize. Thank you for this awesome presentation. Where do you suggest we keep the emergency kit? Emergency kit. Usually, when we're in, we have a military saying. I mean, I don't want to do that much. I said, you always keep it with the arm's reach. That means as, as much as my arm can reach, that's what it really, how far it should be. Okay? Now, 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 this is a way you can work it out. Now, this is when we come into the EDC, the everyday carry, or we can go into, okay, do I go to work every day? Now, this is just an example. For example, you go to Walmart, Walmart, you can get emergency kits for $5, okay? In your next paycheck, this is just me, an example, that you can buy something, okay, let me buy three kits. I guess one, I want one in my car, one in my kitchen, and probably one with me, you know? Something as simple as that, and then you have something. Then the biggest thing is know where they are. And actually, if you need to put something in the wall and say, okay, this is first aid kit, not only for you, for, for your family members. And you tell, hey, if something happens, this is where you need to go and you find the emergency kit, not only for you, but also in case something happens to me and I cannot get to it, you can get for me and treat me. Uh, Verada says, I saw something in Costco about a meal pack. I will check the details in that pack next time I am there. I just wanted to say, I, I think that's very interesting because we were addressing earlier about the pre-made kind of packs that you can buy. Yes. And obviously those work really well, but just keep in mind that you always want to tailor it to your own situation. <clears throat> so, you know, you might need some kind of prescription or your family member might have a disability or something that requires them to have something specific in case of an emergency. So always remember that uh, even when you are getting things that are pre-made, it'll obviously it's still gonna do the job, but it's something to keep in consideration. Yes, I'm very quick into that. Remember, it is not only have the prepaid bags and everything, is please take your time and open one of those bags and prepare it so you see how it is the process. So you know, okay, let me see how it is, how difficult it is. So that way it's easier for you when emergency happens, okay? Believe me. Uh, yes, sorry, I'm looking at the, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, first yeah. Thing that you can find at your local CVS yeah. or Walgreens. Let, let, me, uh, let me tell you something. It's very funny. Many years ago, and it's still in existence, if I'm not mistaken, if you're in Europe, when you get your BMW and Mercedes, believe it or not, in the very back of your vehicle, it has a little compartment that comes with the emergency kit with your vehicle. Okay? By the way, in case you didn't know that, uh, but it does. I know that because I, I used to live in Europe. I, 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 I uh, Many years ago, and I know the ceiling exists, and they come with the compartment. Even now and then, when you buy a Mercedes or BMW, it come, that little compartment exists. The thing is for me to know, in case you didn't know, that comes with it. That's number one. Or number two, that I didn't know. Now, where is the compartment? That's the second question. Find it so you be familiarized with that. So when something happens, you know where to go. Another thing um, I wanted to add to that is that you always want to make sure that you update your, your pack as well always update it because even though you might have that first aid kit that's been sitting in the back of your car for like a year and a half or something you never know <laughs> something in there's inspired uh, expired like an ointment or something you know that could be really bad if you're in a, the middle of an emergency and then you notice oh my gosh the stuff that i need is bad you know so keep that in mind too yes and that's what i usually do guess what the best way is go with the seasons you know it's fall season Guess what? In my bag, I'm going to start putting, guess what? Let me put instead of a light jacket, I'm going to have a heavier jacket, a raincoat, change a pair of socks or gloves. Why? Because I'm switching towards the fall. Okay. If it's summertime, then I just switch and take that clothes out. And by that time I check it, also going to be checking the bag itself, the integrity. If the food is good or expired, do I need to change something? And that's where the things that you need to be aware of. And you, and then you keep your eye in the system. Okay. Thank you. According yes. to the season. Right, right, yes. So you Anything can else, buy Gary? first aid kits at your local drugstore for a few bucks. I know bikers keep it in the back of their bike in case they fall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you use, if you commute, now most people work from home, but definitely the car, I think all cars have it now, even they don't have to be W, uh, BMW or Mercedes. Every car by law have to have it, but it's usually tucked in in the back under everything. And yeah, most people don't even know they have it or where it is. That's like true. Tire or et cetera. So yes. definitely check, yes. Uh, uh, does anyone else have any questions or things you would like to talk about? Well, I was just going to say, um, actually, I think it's fabulous what you said about the seasonal factor. All the disasters that you can really have are going to be, like, say, in Australia, summer, then you're worried about fires. But if it's in the middle of winter, you don't have to have half of your boot filled up with fire stuff. Mm -hmm. And if it, like in some areas in winter, you, you need the chains for your car and things like that. So, um, I, I think what might be worth for people, and I don't know what your thoughts are on encouraging people in your programs for this, is mm -hmm. to just build a risk assessment, to actually look at the sorts of things that they can imagine may go wrong in their situation and to start building all their plans from that. Yes, absolutely. Very good, uh, very good uh, point. And actually, that's what it comes into that was early mentioning about the mitigation process. When you do that risk assessment, those are things that you're going to start avoiding. Okay, what if, what is the worst that can happen? And what are things that I can do to mitigate, to avoid that? And then based on where you're going and also the time of year and also, believe it or not, like over here where, where I station right now, guess what? I, it's nice and sunny and ne in the next 20 minutes, it could be hail and raining and thunderstorm. Guess what? So in the back of my truck, I have to always bring some kind of equipment to protect me because of that. Okay, but a, and and it will include all the all the things that I put on it in the in my package. But yes, that, that's what you usually do. You conduct a risk assessment even before where you go anywhere. And that's the things. Well, we go on vacation. Oh yeah, we go to vacation. But then guess what? That's the least thing that you can think about is hey, if something happens, how are we gonna manage? Because that's happened too. People go on vacation, for example, to South America, and next thing you know they have an emergency there, and now they don't even know where to communicate to who they're gonna communicate where they need to go and how they're gonna manage their emergency. And those are things that can happen, okay? Yes, the geographical factor is very, very important as well when assessing. Yeah, yeah. for example, with that, um, when I moved into a, a place about 10 years ago, it was at the bottom of a huge hill and I wanted to utilize some of the areas and I thought this is gonna flood. So I actually built a garden bed on the concrete in front of those areas to divert all of the water and soak up the water. And the following winter, 
we got a visit from our SES, which are our emergency services, a proactive visit knocking on our door, telling us that our house had been <laughs> identified as within a group that would not survive predicted rainfall this winter. <clears throat> and, um, and he said, we need to have a look around and, and, and show you, give you any tips about things. And he just looked at what we've done and he said, that's amazing. That's exactly the sort of thing that, you know, but that's it. I, you look, you're on top of a hill, you're in the bottom of a hill. One of the ones that as a, as a gardener of these days, landscaper that I know that people don't think about is tree branches and tree branches above their car port or windows. You, you, you need to basically do an arborist health check around your dwelling for fires or anything because they muck up trees and a lot of people overlook just dangerous tree branches nearby. Yes. Uh, no, I agree. Um, so in October of 2019, while in Texas, there was a tornado that actually hit my area and a giant tree branch fell on our car <laughs> as, as one would, you know, and it's crazy because all the other trees were uprooted, but the tree stayed and the big branch fell. And it was really, really bad and really catastrophic for us, you know, and it's something that you don't think about until the moment. And that's why we want to create this program so that people, you know, can be prepared for that because it's something that you don't think about until it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just, uh, I mean, the risk assessment can, can be useful to a degree because uh, as I was mentioning earlier, even areas that historically have never had any type of disaster started having disasters because everything is shifting. So don't be so sure. Even if you think you are in a quote unquote relatively safe area, um, you still need to be prepared because um, anywhere on earth, there is potential for uh, emergency and disaster. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, even for a simple trip, you never know. Uh, even for example, you go decide to go to Colorado Springs, from the get go, believe it or not, the first thing that risk in my risk assessment is going to be the altitude. I know I'm going to go from here to 6,000 feet of altitude. Is that going to give me shorter breath? Absolutely, because I'm, I don't live there in Colorado. See, so those are little tiny things that, believe it or not, it can make a difference in your health. And also, even probably just your whole vacation will go kaput and you're done. Believe it or not, it can happen. Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, great. So, um, Excellent. So maybe for those of you who are left, Jillian, Michael, Dr. D.P. and Veron, what is one action that you could, uh, would love to take as a result of this presentation? Oh, hi, I have one. Uh, being that I did live in California at one time, I did always keep a kit or something around for earthquakes. Now in New York City, I kind of got laxadacia with that. So I need to put batteries and stuff. You know, I don't know what can happen here, but. Oh, no, it uh, did happen. No, you guys. Oh, have actually, yeah, the hurricane. Yes. Sandy, yeah. Yes. So need to stay on top of that. Yeah, even after that, you decided. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this is a reminder. Yeah. Okay, get your kit ready, Jillian. You can do it. Um, and what about... Yeah. Uh, the yes. <laughs> and, and that's very common. Guess what? Especially in New York, you know what is winter. And you get stuck at home over there. And then if especially you live over there in those complex apartments that is in the, in the ninth floor. And then, you, oh, man, I have to go all the way downstairs because the you cannot use the elevator now. And then you actually have medical conditions. You see, those are things that you have to think about it. And they go, okay, now I have to get batteries. I have to deal now. We have no electricity. And then, uh, you know, it, it's different things. Oh. I know in New York, I, I know winter time, and it goes on like it happened with Sandy and Storm. Right. You know, down in Louisiana, we had the other one, uh, the, the other big one that happened there. It was disastrous. And then there's other things. Yes. Absolutely. So Dr. Divgi and Veron will get their medical emergency kit. Um, and what about you? What about you, Michael? Anything, as, any action? Anything. Well, um, for both survival and business purposes, I've been dreaming about, I've got my eyes on a generator I've wanted for a long time, and I will get that sometime. <laughs> yes. Um, 
the other thing, the real big thing, I just love that um, CERT. Um, I just think that I've got a lot I can offer and I do in crisis with that. But these days I've got my chainsaws and it's all petrol, so it's portable. Um, because the tree branch doesn't just hurt the individual or hurt the house or hurt the car. It blocks the way. Mm -hmm. And when we in Melbourne, we've had this several times in the last two years. So the storms that have come through have taken so many tree branches down around the place and nothing's really urgent. People just can't go to the supermarket for three hours. But it, it, it's just that people don't know where to go and the SES run out of resources. And I do not believe that maximally funding the government to try to have more cars and more people to fix everything is the way we need to go. It's just got to come back to the individual. And I love the idea of community um, support for the case of crisis. We had another one in Melbourne in the last six months. We've had a lot as well as the COVID but the fires, but we had um, a storm that contaminated the water in Melbourne. So we had no drinking water for four days a couple of months ago. And you just have to know who, which, which neighbours are home and which neighbours are helpless unless they get some <coughs> close help. And so I just love the idea of building it up from the community and informally and formally setting up. Um, so I'm going to be making some steps on that. I've decided to add it to my really core values and the way I roll. With that, with that being said, if you'll let me also, uh, a couple of things that we need to be aware of is that, like that, have, probably have water aside in case something like that happened, but only that, how about filtering? Do I have some how to filter the water so you'll be able to, to, at least if you don't have it on the moment, where you'll be able to get some water, you'll probably have a process of filter and have it there so you can make potable water and you have something to drink because not only for drinking, you probably might need it for cooking. That's another thing. And then believe it or not, is that if by humans, it's usually one gallon of water per day, okay? So you do the math, you might one gallon of water per day, that, that, that's, uh, you know, you can take at least, what, five gallons? That means for five days per person, okay? But usually it's more than that. Uh, it's, I think it's about five gallons of water per person per day. And that is for drinking, uh, drinking, taking care of themselves, and also uh, uh, cooking and everything else. So uh, water is, is, it could be a very expensive luxury eventually, even in the future, if we don't take care of the water as it is right now, believe it or not, uh, of our water resources. Right. Okay. Very good, thank you. Maybe, um, Michael, in, your, in the next mastermind on numerology, you can incorporate a little bit about something about the earth. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be a very interesting session next month on the mastermind. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I was actually a numerology practitioner for a few years in the late 90s. I was young and had this business, and it's a little bit like star sign stuff, and it's a little bit off some people's page, but I'll tell you what, it can be very, very accurate. And it suggests some very interesting things about human nature. The, uh, basically, we are not just a little bit different from each other, but if we find someone that's in the same sort of group as us, we can be a little bit more than very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it, some of those mysteries of why we're like that and, that and our partner or our family are so different or our brother or sister, but if we can meet a stranger at work and we don't have to explain anything. They understand our rationale. So it's... A, Clusters of rationale has been an obsession of mine for years, typing of which where people fit. And it affects teamwork a lot and compatibility a lot. And it's a bit like that five love languages uh, book that helps people realize that not the same food nurtures all of us the same way. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very important to get in touch with the sorts of things that give us a sense of success in our existence, which might be completely different territory of achievement from the person next to us. And if we stop being threatened by these differences, we do start to look at the way we don't even have to force teams to happen. We already live in a lot of informal, natural teams. And it's just about knowing that in a team, we don't have to be all doing small bits of the same task, completely different tasks. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, we've got to face the trust between those because when you speak another language, that it, it, there's a real danger for either misrepresentation, manipulation or lack of trust. And so you, you pick your team, you get your core intentions and you've got that compatibility. And I'll be exploring some of these things, looking at fun things like our birth date and our first name. And, <laughs> um, and I'll be able to answer any difficult questions, any skeptics or people that uh, you know, want to sort of find the integrity fully to what I've come up with. Uh, you can ask me any questions you like and that'll be on next month. Sounds good. But what I'm saying, you can also include something about uh, overall uh, earth uh, movement. You know, mm -hmm. it could tie into disasters since um, people will have watched this replay as well.
Perhaps. Well, particularly that team aspect, because some people, are, it's just like if you go camping, camping's a great prep as well. I will, I'll say, I've always said to people, go camping if you're not into it, because it's a great practice on handling a disaster. You don't have all the comforts and you don't have every single resource you do have, maybe the power's off, you know, so that there's, there's a lot of um, personality type influences in how a family can cope with a crisis. Do Who's good at scouting the Michael. area? Uh, numerology of COVID-19. Well, it's, are you, I've been joking for <laughs> about 30 years that we're going to be able to see things clearly in 2020. It's based on, you know, that 2020 vision. <laughs> yes. And I had yeah. that joke for years that we're going to be able to see everything clearly in 2020. And then what happened in 2020, for those that did have their eyes open, more than just a bad disease and a global threat, so much of humanity has had to rise to that point of awareness. Yep. It is, it is, has been a crisis and a disaster, and we're looking at how everyone can recover and, wow. Yes, but there is always the, um, the good, uh, the glass half, half full, and we'll wrap it up with this, and I'll let uh, uh, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant uh, wrap it up. But there is this great documentary, I think you'll find it for free. It's called The Year Earth Change, The Year Earth Change. Mm -hmm. uh, is on uh, online. You find it. Yeah, just came out. Earth change, and it shows all the good things that happen as a result of COVID. Uh, yeah, I put an extra eight, but there you go. Okay, very good. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Doctor, um, uh, Sergeant, First Class Sergeant, Senior <laughs> Sergeant Rodriguez, and Gabby. I'll let you. I'll let you say the last words. Say that. Oh, um, I want to say thank you to everyone for being here. <laughs> uh, really appreciate it. If you guys want to check out the International Pace Academy, uh, the website is up. We have not linked any of the programs yet, but they will be up there eventually so that people can be able to pick their program and learn more about what specifically would work for them. And uh, yes, there it is on the screen. And our email is there. So if you guys want to shoot us an email uh, talking about this presentation, have, asking us any questions that you may still have, or if you want to at least just tell us uh, how we're doing, what you think, is there anything we may need to add, uh, let us know at that email. Uh, so yeah, and then you. Yes, uh, well, thank you for the opportunity to be uh, allow us to do this and put out this presentation. And thank you very much for everything. Um, at the same uh, token, that, as uh, Gabby was telling, say, remember, we're here to help out. And actually, like I said, we have, uh, if you have any questions or you need any help in regards, like, for example, setting up medical kits, um, I can do that. We can do that for you. Um, remember, and, and like, um, like our compadre was talking about, it depends on your situation. If you want it, you want something because you go hunting. Okay, don't worry. We prep you something because you go hunting. If it's something because you go swimming, we do something because you go swimming. So we're here to accommodate you the best way possible. Um, I thank you very much for the for your attention and take out of your time to, for this presentation, as well for Gabby, as well as the disposition for any people, for you, Dr. and my wife as well, that is happy and supporting. And we go from there. Fabulous. Everybody, please uh, join uh, facebook.com forward slash groups intercontinental mastermind will put all the replays on there as well and you can interact with one another um so thank you very much thank and you do follow through with your action stay in touch and we'll support you through it stay safe and strong be prepared and add at least 30 years to your life your love <laughs> <laughs> yes. thank you yeah yeah, thank you so much for that presentation. It was great. Right, no problem. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So let me stop the recording on Facebook. There you go. See you next time. See you. See you soon, Michael. Ciao. Bye, Michael. Okay, one moment. Let me stop it on Facebook too. Yes.
Um, yeah. See, Angie's gone. Angie's probably gone. Yeah, she's gone. Okay. But yeah, she was there because it was my name, but it was See? her picture, so I knew it was her. Yeah. Because I just forwarded her the email, so mm -hmm. I don't even know if she responded, she responded back. Nah, she yeah. didn't. Hopefully, no. every, everything's everything works. Why does it take to get live? One second. Yeah, thank you very much for the time. I'm a little hungry anyway. <laughs> live on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, lunch. That was where, where we pick. It was 